out, so I was a little challenging. <laughs> uh, let me, I, you know, I never have any notes, and so I just speak, you know, to you from the heart, and I just tell you the truth, and uh, we got a lot of good stuff today. But let me tell you about a day, and I just thought about this coming in the door, but let me tell you about a day that happened to a a younger man that had brown hair and was pretty skinny, and it was me a long time ago. Now, and it happened right here in Wheeling, and it happened right at the Wheeling Airport. But my dad was my best man in my wedding. And if you've heard this story, just bear with me. But he was my best bud. And in 1993, he had been in Florida and playing some golf and was on the way home and just stopped off at Duke Hospital, as healthy as he could be, and, and just stopped off there because he had been really active in the Duke Children's Classic. Basically, was one of the founding guys that started or really helped the Duke Children's Hospital. And so, he stopped off there just to get a checkup, just a physical. And so, all of a sudden they found his platelet count was a little low and called me on the phone and said, you know, he called me Jimmy. He said, Jimmy, I'll be home tomorrow, but they've got to keep me overnight. They've got to do a gamma globulin treatment, you know, which is something they used to do, I think, for chicken pox. He said, it's absolutely nothing, but my platelet count's just a little low. Well, Believe it or not, he picked up pneumonia from somebody in the hospital. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And so he ended up in the hospital for about four or five days. And then he flew home. And when he got home, he was so sick and coughing and everything, it was just unbelievable. Well, long and short of it is... We rushed him back to the hospital. He still had double pneumonia. That went on for about uh, 10 more days. And then all of a sudden he picked up a bacterial infection from somebody in the hospital and died. He was 68 years old. And so bad things happen to all of us. No matter if we're black, white, rich, poor, Democrat, Republican, whatever it may be, they happen. But this story goes back even further than that. Because in 1971, or 70 rather, the Ohio River Barge Company dedicated a barge, I mean a, a you know, tugboat or whatever they call it, pushes the, the barges up and down the river in my dad's honor. And we were asked to come to New Orleans I was a 19-year-old kid, and off to New Orleans we went to dedicate the boat, and it was called the James C. Justice, and launched the boat. Now, imagine, just imagine, they, that the oldest child was to say the blessing on the boat. And then my mom broke the bottle of champagne, and they shoved it off into the water. And that's exactly what happened. I was scared to death. Because there was four or five hundred people there, and I, and and I had never said a prayer in front of that many people by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm scared to death. But some way, somehow, I got through it, and off the boat went. I saw the boat one other time in my life. The only other time in my life that I saw the boat was probably six months later. Kathy and I were going across the bridge, you know, from Huntington to Portsmouth, Ohio, and all of a sudden there was the boat going right underneath the bridge. I never saw it again. My dad died in 1993, in June of 1993. Now he ran our coal businesses and I ran our ag and timber and land businesses and so on like that. And what I knew about the coal business you could put in a thimble. But we worked side by side and we helped each other and dad would give me three parts to a five part puzzle all the time. And, and, but some way, somehow, you know, we made it through doing all the stuff we did. Now all of a sudden he's gone. 
and our coal business was hemorrhaging. And I didn't know what in the world to do, because I didn't know anything about it hardly. In some way, somehow, then it became January, six or seven months later. Today, way worse than today. Way more windy, way more cold, way more snow. And the snow flying everywhere. And all of a sudden, Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel called me on the phone, or called me through Peabody, which was marketing our coal, and said, if you can get here today, we're going to buy our coal from you. And gracious goodness alive, you know, we had tried so hard, so hard, to get any kind of coal market anywhere. So I had no way of getting there today, except I called Charleston to Executive Air, and they sent a propeller, a propeller plane there and picked me up in Beckley, West Virginia. I didn't even own a top coat. I had a little sport coat. I got it on, and off to the airport I went. Well, there's the plane. I run out. I get on the plane. We fly. When we're coming through the air, we're all over the sky. My goodness gracious, it was rough, rough. Scared me totally to death, and boom, we hit the runway. There's one lane of the runway swept and everything, and down through there we go, and some way, somehow, I'm just so thankful that I'm alive. And now I'm on the way to Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel, of all things, you know, and I don't have any idea what in the world I'm going to be talking about. Because what I know about the coal business, I knew a thimbleful, and now I knew a teacupful. But nevertheless, off we went. I got out of that plane, and I'll never forget walking across the tarmac. The wind just cut me in two. It was so cold, it was unbelievable how cold it was. And down the hill, I got in a little taxi cab, and down the hill I went. And when we got to the bottom of the hill, we turned. And when we turned, there was Dad's boat, right beside me. I hadn't seen it since 1970. It's the only other time I saw it in my life. We got to business at Wheeling Pit, and then everything else is just history. Off we went. So today, when we landed, all over the sky a little bit, it was a pretty nasty deal. Not anywhere close as nasty as that day. But that day was really special, and I appreciate you letting me ramble on and go through all that, but it's a mighty, mighty special moment in my life. But anyway, nevertheless, today, we've got several nice things to do. Nice things to do. It's always fun when the governor gets to give away money. <laughs> so we've got some recycling grants and some land and water grants, and we're going to give you some money today. And then we're going to make a great announcement after that, but... Uh, but these recycling grants, they're really neat because, you know, basically these grants are available to the counties, to municipalities, and, you know, for, for everything from developing educational campaigns to recycling programs to purchasing recycling equipment. All the things that really and truly makes us a little less... Uh, junkier and a whole lot more stewards of the earth and, and doing good work. So I'm going to need somebody to read because I can't see. You know, they, write, they make this print real big for me. But once you get into the little print, it's really tough for me. And so, so I'm going to give away two of these recycling grants. One of them is for $20,000. It's to Wetzel County. Uh, and, and it's for the Zanesville Welfare Organization and Goodwill Industries. It's to assist with the purchase of a used forklift for the recycling operation. Now, before I ask these people to come up here, I'd like to just say this. You know, in government, lots of times we deal in numbers that have lots and lots of zeros. You know, whether it be 2 million, 20 million, 200 million, lots of times it's got bunches of zeros with it. But you know what? Here's a $20,000 grant to buy a used forklift. 
But yet, this $20,000 grant is just as important to the people that are receiving it as that $2 million, $20 million, $200 million. All they are is a lot more zeros. And really, at the end of the day, that's the one thing that I have never lost focus with. Never. You're talking to the guy that stood on the street corner and sold Christmas trees and, and carried sweet corn to every place under the sun. And I know, I know how important just this right here is. So if these people come up, we're going to let somebody read this tremendous declaration. And that will be you, Rebecca. Okay? And then we're going to get our picture made with you. Is there anybody here? Somebody's got to be here. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> well, who can we give this to? Um, Somebody who's got to be here. Zanesville, Zanesville Welfare Organization and Goodwill Industries. Is there anybody from Wetzel County here? No, I guess not. Okay. Um, Y'all want to go to Wendy's on this? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to try to read, and then we'll get it to them. It says, the state of West Virginia, Department of Environmental Protection, 2019 Recycling Assistance Grant is awarded to Gainesville Welfare Organization and Goodwill Industries Incorporated for recycling efforts in West Virginia, and it is for a used forklift. So God bless them in every way. Okay, here we go again. Now, I hope to goodness that somebody's here from Brook County, but this is Brook County Commission. This is a $50,000 grant, and it is the grant will support the Brook Hills Park Spray Pool. The new facilities improvements to the pool include a water slide, new bathhouse, new concessions building. I like that a lot. And, <laughs> and a zero depth pool entry. So if someone could come from Brook, Brook County and we'll, we'll let Rebecca read and we'll give you all this stuff. Okay? Yes. <laughs> you have to read it. Okay. Yes. Hi. Good. How are you? Very nice to meet you. So, I mean, so it took you to come up and then here yeah. comes everybody. <laughs> Okay, so Land and Water Conservation Fund Grant. This is to certify that a grant of $50,000 has been awarded to Brook County Commission for the Brook Hills Park Spray Bed. Sorry, is that what that says? Splash Bed. Spray Bed. I'm sorry, Spray Bowl. I like and the And I'll go to the eye doctor tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> acquisition and development of state and local parks. This one's to the city of Moundsville for $92,811. And this grant will allow for the completion of a weatherization big word, and an ADA, and ADA improvements at the Four Seasons Pool in the city of Moundsville, the city of Moundsville's Evan Roberts Recreational complex. Now, before these people come, and before Rebecca reads without any glasses, <laughs> let me just say this that for every dollar, for every dollar that we have come in to our communities, whether it be $20,000, $50,000, $92,811. 
For every dollar, there's a multiplier effect to that dollar. And that dollar turns into eight to 14 times. So this $92,811 is going to turn into close to right under a million or significantly more than a million dollars of money. And that's what happens to a dollar. A dollar in West Virginia. So not only are we going to do neat stuff in the city of Moundsville, but we're absolutely going to perpetuate all kinds of additional goodness. You know, naturally it'll be a job or two or 10 or 15 or whatever it may be, maybe even more than that. But it'll be revenue that will turn into tax dollars that will maybe be able to come back for the schools or whatever it may be. But it's nevertheless, it's, it's a multiplier effect and that's what we're trying to do in West Virginia. You see, and I, I surely did, I'm surely not saying this from the standpoint of, a, you know, patting myself on the back or patting anybody on the back. But that's what we need to do in West Virginia. That's the whole thing. I mean, at the end of the day, like it or not like it, but when I walked in the door, it was tough time. I mean, it was tough stuff. I mean, Jiminy, one thing you can't, you can't, you know, deprive me of is being a business guy. I am that. And when I flip, the, they flipped the books open in front of me. My gracious, we were so DOA, it was unbelievable. I mean, we didn't even have a pulse. I mean, there's no hope of a pulse. Now, today it's better. It's tons better. And we're doing lots and lots and lots of stuff. It doesn't mean that there's still not lots to do. And just this right here is another step along the way. And if we all get behind, whether, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're West Virginians first and foremost. And that's what we should be doing. You see, I said it till I'm blue-green. But I don't want to think. I really don't want to think. I want to be here because I want us to do better. You see, I think you're the greatest. I really do. I always have. I've always thought West Virginians were the greatest. And it bothers me to my soul when we're the blunt end of bad jokes. You are the greatest. You live in the greatest place. You know, yesterday, I was going to write a letter to one of my friends, and here's what I would say to him. You know, he's, he's made it well in his life, and he buys fancy things, and he travels all over the world, and that's what they want to do. You see, I was going to say, and this is exactly what I will say when I get around to writing a letter, and I'll say just this. I'll say, you know, I've never wanted to go anywhere else. You see, I've only been to Europe one time in my life, and it was only there for like 36 hours. I don't go anywhere because I know how good it is right here. That's what I do. You know, all that I want in ever in life is exactly what I want to do. I want to be with you. I want to be in this great state. I want to be on a trout stream. I want to be with my little bird dog, you know, chasing around after a grouse. I want to be right here where it's not 10,000 degrees in the summer, and we have the greatest fishing, we have the greatest hunting, we have the greatest people, we have the greatest of all kinds of things we can do. If you want to be crazy, you can get a whitewater raft. You know, if you absolutely want to do something on an ATV trail or you want to see the greatest, you know, the shopping experiences or golf or whatever, maybe, it's all right here. You know, can you imagine me on skis? <laughs> that would be a danger to a lot of people. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, that's all I want. I just want this $92,000 to turn into more goodness and be just another step in the way for us uh, that leads us to where we want to be. And that's where the world knows just how good we are. And they're starting to hear it. So that's good. So, read. Okay. <clears throat> Moundsville people, please come. Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. This is a certified grant of $92,811.
has been awarded to the city of Moundsville for the Four Seasons Coal Renovation, given to under my hand, Governor Jim Justice. So proud of you, John. Happy for you. Thank you. Good. I'm going to thank y'all. I appreciate you guys. Thank y'all so much. No. No, I always love coming to Cleveland. I really did it. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. I'm going to come up here and coach a basketball team. We're playing Lewin Park up here, too. Okay. Now. This is really, really, really important. Today, I have the opportunity from time to time to appoint circuit court judges. I've had the opportunity to appoint Supreme Court judges. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't really expect that one to be the truth, but that's going to be like a regular, everyday occurrence. But, uh, but there's a gentleman with us today and I don't know if his family's here or not, but Michael J., and if I would have looked at this, I would have thought, my gosh, it can't be Ojeda. <laughs> <laughs> but Elisa, is that correct? Holy ash. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Holy ash? Yes. yes is the ending ash? Yes. Holy ash. How about that? Okay. Well, thank God it's not Ojet. But, <laughs> but if Michael could come forward today, this is going to be your new circuit court judge, and we're very, very happy to that I am able to appoint him. And, and congratulations, sir. And so this is your first Couldn't be more proud of him and proud, I'm sure, of his family and all the different things that he's done for this community. I think, let me have that back, Rebecca. I think he was a, a wheeling city police officer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And, and has made his way in life, and now he's, now you're a big dog. <laughs> That's all there is to it. And, and, and you were a big dog all along. But I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, sign officially now right in front of this beautiful man and it says this is going to our Secretary of State it says Dear Secretary Warner pursuant to the provisions of West Virginia Code and I think it says 3103 I have this day appointed Michael J. Oliash <laughs> 20 Elmwood Place Wheeling, Ohio County, West Virginia, as the circuit court judge of the first circuit court to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of the Honorable James P. Mason. So, here I go. This is official now. <laughs> Yeah, what a paint. Good Thank stuff. You. Really happy for you, That's really good. 
Okay. That's it. Go back to work. <laughs> Be good. <laughs>